Hey there, this is Creative Chordal Harmony for Guitar by Mick Goodrick and Tim Miller, one of my favorite books. I have talked about this book a little bit before. It is a great book, one of my favorite books. So I have talked about this book a little bit in the past and I got some comments that people are saying it's a little bit difficult to work with and I agree with that. So we're gonna simplify things. There is a specific concept in this book called generic modality compression. So I'm gonna explain what that is, but I'm gonna be a little bit careful as always because I don't wanna give away too much from the book, too much information from the book. I wanna inspire you to get the book. A lot of people are frustrated with the Mick Goodrick books because they're impossible to find and very expensive if you do find one. This book you can find and it's pretty inexpensive. So I really recommend that you get it. So let's get started, shall we? So first off, I'm just gonna explain the idea of generic modality compression, or at least a simple explanation of it, and then we're gonna use it over a tune. So the idea is pretty genius. It's imagine you have a scale or a mode that you just omit the root, and then you end up with six notes, which creates two three-note voicings, so three-note shapes or triads. So an example, let's say we have C Lydian. We want to use it over C major seven. We want to create two different triads. If we omit the C, we can pick this triad. E minor, which is G, B and E. That means there are three remaining notes from the mode which are these. Together, those two triads create a C Lydian scale without the root. The idea is that we don't need the root because the bass player is playing the root. Here's a C. Here's an E minor. D, E minor. And I'm just going through the inversions. E minor, D, lines too, right? So all that is is triad coupling. So far it's not super original because a lot of books talk about triad coupling or triad pairing, hexatonics, but they kind of expand on this idea. So Let's say you were to change one of the notes from one of those triads. Let's say I drop the A to a G. I get this beautiful three note voicing, which is uh, hard to give a name, right? Like it's one of those non-generic triads. Then you have to figure out the, inver the inversions of that. playing a D triad and dropping the A to a G. Well, now I've changed one of the notes, that means I have to change another note from the other three note voicing. So I'll get this. Instead of E minor, I get a, I get a sus voicing. So now I have this. So the, the interesting thing here is that before they were moving kind of in parallel. All the voicings are, or all the voices are going in the same direction. If I play that as a pattern, it's kind of easy to hear it. 
now when I change one of the notes, it's not going to be parallel anymore. It's going to be contrary motion. Sometimes the voices will go in different directions. Now, if you use this technique, there are 10 combinations, 10 combinations of these two triad shapes or three note shapes. The first one we did, it's going to be called triad triad because it's a triad and another triad. The other one is going to be called sus shape, sus four and a major seven with no third because it's a G major seven with no third. I left out the third. So those are the names they use in this book for to describe these shapes. So there are 10 combinations. So you could figure that out for yourself if you're a smart individual or you can get the book and they have it laid out for you. Which one should I do? Some people ask. I say you do both. You try to figure out yourself, but you also get the book so that you have this as a point of reference. Now, the problem with the book is that they show you this technique. They explain the concept of non of generic modality compression. And then you're supposed to do all those 10 combinations over Stella by Starlight as chords and as lines. So every chord type that you find in Stella by Starlight, and that's a little bit too much. Again, this is my opinion. When I was working with the book, I find myself frustrated because I mean, I can do it. I can learn an example like that where they go through Stella by Starlight with all these combinations, but I'm just kind of memorizing the shapes. I'm not really able to kind of freely move around with the shapes, which was is what I'm aiming for. So we're going to use a simpler method. We're going to use a simpler tune and we're only going to look at one chord type at a time. So instead of trying to do it over every chord type, we're just going to use it over a simpler tune and one chord type. And uh, yeah, one thing I for before I forget, it is also possible to do this with open triads. So E minor and D, those are closed triads, right? If I do it with open triads, it sounds like this. So E minor, D, E minor, E minor. So if I have a C, that a lot of uh, the modern players do this kind of stuff so instead of playing a major seven chord like that which sounds kind of beginner they do this stuff and all of a sudden it's like when you hear it, it's like where is this harmony coming from but from uh, this kind of stuff all right so now we're gonna do this over Cantaloupe Island. I prepared a little exercise where we do this over Cantaloupe Island. So Cantaloupe Island is an F minor chord. So F Dorian. Then where is this a D flat seven, which suggests D Lydian flat seven. But we're not gonna treat. We're gonna. We're not gonna practice over that chord. We're just gonna play whatever over that chord. Then it goes to D minor where you can play D Dorian. So we're gonna use this technique over the F minor seven and the D minor seven. So some people play the, treat the first chord as a mixolydian. I've, I've heard both. Uh, I prefer when it's Dorian. So if we have a F minor, F Dorian scale, right, we're gonna do the same thing. Let's uh, omit the root. We have this. Six notes that we can combine in 10 different ways. And then we can also use them as open triads. So I'm not gonna do all of that. Again, I wanna leave something. Also, I, want, I don't want to give away too much from the book, right? So 
if we stack the scale like this instead, that's the, the F Dorian scale. And then I omit the root, then I have an A flat triad and G minor. So F minor, A flat, and G minor. So I could play those, A flat, G minor. I'm just going up the inversions. This is the example that the book would describe as triad plus triad, because it's a, ge a generic triad, A flat, and another triad, G minor. That's the only two triads, generic triads, you can find in that key, like F Dorian. Some pe sometimes people ask me what backing track I'm using in my lessons. It's always iReal Pro, right? I'm kind of assuming that everybody has heard of this amazing app, iReal Pro, which enables me to r remove the keyboard and just use the bass and drums. So this tune has kind of a blue note feel to it. So the D minor is gonna be a F and E minor triads, right? So A flat, G minor, A flat. And the next chord I play whatever. F, E minor. minor and F. So you might want to decide if you're practicing lines or comping or like chords. All right, so let's go find the next uh, three note combination. So another triad I could find is C minor. I can find that in that scale, right? So C minor. If I look at the remaining notes, I get this shape. So C minor and this, which is a seventh chord with no fifth. That's how they explain it. So it's like a B flat dominant seven, right? But without the F, because we don't want the F. That's the root. So then you have to figure out the, the inversions of this shape. So if I start with this shape, C minor, sec, first inversion, I go up using this technique, the next voicing is called, also going to be C minor. If I, you, if I let the bottom note go up this six note scale, then I get this. So 
of a sudden you don't hear it like a like a parallel harmony anymore so in this case i'm letting the bottom note go up the scale remember it's a scale without the f If I do that, the top note is not going to go up like that. It's going to sound different because sometimes the voices are going in different directions. Or I could choose to let the top note go up the scale. So this book talks about that kind of stuff. At the end of the book, there is this chapter, like an appendix. So that's a lot of people, their, their argument is that you, don't, that you don't need the book. Because once you figure out the idea, you don't need to have it all written out, right? So... A lot of books are like that. Like they explain a concept and then it's just like page after page of written out examples, which you don't really need because you could figure it out yourself. So that is true in a sense, but it's also nice to have it all laid out so that you can keep track of where you are, where you're working on stuff and stuff like that. So I always prefer to get the book. And also, of course, you want to support Tim Miller and Mick Goodrick, but it's not really true because there's an appendix to this book where they go over all sorts of crazy applications for this technique, right? So, but it's also true that it's a little bit unnecessary with all like Stella by Starlight written out, but whatever. I, I think you should definitely get the book. So let, let's uh, just try that exercise. gonna be A minor here right on the D minor could also start on this triad, an E flat triad, and the remaining notes would be this, which is a seventh with no third. It's like a D minus seven flat five without the F. So instead of playing our four note arpeggio, imagine doing it without the F. This is something that comes up too in my practicing these four part chords with a, one of the voices left out. So we have this, E flat, this. So those combinations would sound like this, E flat. If we look at that, for example, the E flat here with the second inversion going to this shape. See how some voices go up? And, but the middle voice go down. So there's contrary motion, right? Which is you didn't have with the first example where there were two generic triads. Here you have that. So I'm moving on here. Let's find a more modern sound. Let's say we want to use a, a sus shape. So this is a common F minor 11, right? So that's a sus triad or a sus shape. The remaining three notes also create a sus shape. So 
So if I start down here... Very sophisticated. Again, some voices go down, some go up. Ah. I love that. Try it over the tune. that's an easier way to work with the book instead of now you see I've, I'm able to kind of move around freely with these shapes which is what I want to be able to do whereas before when I was trying to play these examples over Stella by Starlight where there's two of them in every bar and the chords are changing I just got frustrated but I guess for Tim Miller and Mick Goodrick they can do that no problem but for us mortals there's these chapters on how to create lines using this book right like really I haven't looked at all of it, to be honest. It's a lot of work. Then there's even more stuff at the end. So something, for example, just to give you an idea of the, the stuff at the end here. So they talk about the bottom note descending or the top note descending. That's the stuff I was talking about before. Open voicings, compressed chord scales. Closed voicings, compressed chord scales. Uh, rootless voicings. So you could take this these scales... So let's uh, say I have this F minor scale, right? With uh, no F and play them as dyads. So if I start with a third, for example, let's say I start with a C and E flat. The next interval is gonna be this. And then, because the, I'm skipping the, the, the root there. these nice double stops that with any interval right so they that's that then there is ways to attack two consecutive three note voicings right so there's so many ways you can play them just page after page here for example I can play the top note first if I take for example G minor and A flat the first example I can play the top note and then the other two bottom note and then the top notes I could play the 
outer voices first and then the middle voice. That could be the open triads too, right? combine them so you know different combinations so there was like four or five pages on that and then there's like an open voicing going to a closed so kind of if I start with an open voicing and then the next one is closed that's another combination I'm just showing you this I'm kind of moving quickly but I'm just showing you this so that you don't think that Oh, I can watch this video and I don't have to get the book. If you want to dig really into that kind of stuff and delve into the more advanced concepts of this book, you need to get the book. And it's also very fascinating. And at the end, he talks about how he came up with this concept. It's really a fascinating read. So tons of reasons why you should get the book. But I have made this uh, PDF available for you my who are Patreons. So to all my patrons, thank you so much. And the PDF is up, up there of the examples we used over Cantaloupe Island. So with all that, I want to thank you for your time and your attention. And I shall see you next time.